Jimmy, the new year is rapidly approaching, and uh, my new comic is going to be coming out January 1st, 2024. Let's go show it off. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Got a good one for you guys today, man. Big announcement. Uh, but first, got to let you guys know that the channel is a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,600 videos uh, to date. We might have talked about your favorite comics. So go on to the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel, hit the magnifying glass, and give uh, the channel a search for your favorite episodes, your favorite comic books, and check out those episodes. The King Kayfabers on our Patreon uh, are a big help to the channel to keep it going on a regular basis. The Kings uh, at the highest support level get all the videos before anybody else. And uh, that usually can mitigate the Kayfabe effect. When we talk about something pretty rare or very interesting, uh, they get the cheapest copies on the aftermarket. Many of them are hanging out with us in the live stream recording session. Uh, watching us make these episodes alive. Uh, but without further ado, Jimmy, uh, I am making an announcement that on uh, January 1st of 2024, I'm going to begin serializing what I hope to be uh, a daily comic strip on all of uh, my social media platforms and the Cartoonist Kayfabe uh, social media platforms. Uh, going to be calling it Switchblade Shorties. And I think even here on the channel, every week, maybe as like a Saturday morning cartoon kind of thing. There'll be a second video that, that goes live on Saturdays where I just kind of read through the previous week's strips, show off the, the images, and, uh, you know, get the good word out there on, uh, on this new project I've been putting together, man. Been working at it for about six months to date, have 112 strips done. I hope to have 120 done by the end of the calendar year of, uh, 2023 we're on track to do that you know 10 days to do seven more i think i could i could hit that no problem but these characters in a prototypical stage have uh, already appeared if you scooped up red room crypto killers 3 got a backup feature called uh, latchkey kids that was the original name for uh for for this comic series uh i thought switchblade like the idea of switchblade playing with sharp objects and kids like that, that just seemed more uh, evocative. But uh, this particular story, it's a Bigfoot tale where they're going around killing lanternflies. It's colored with marker, and I think that whenever it comes to book time and I have a format locked, locked down as to like what size and scale the book will be, I think that it's going to turn into a, co a colored book, like maybe with volume two of uh, Switchblade Shorties. It'll be a full, a full color thing using marker color, using color pencil. It was very important to me to use the tools that a kid would would use to do the color, you know, because I wanted it to feel like sort of organic, wanted it to feel messy, but and and poppy, you know, like disabuse myself of color theory a lot, let it just uh, let it feel um, juvenile. For all the tools that we have now digitally, I feel like they're actual color on paper still brings something that can't be replicated. Totally. That's what exists already. Now, what I'm going to be doing, and, and I'll just explain it, the strategy to the people, in case, uh, you know, you might have some interest in doing a daily strip. We, we could we could bring back the format uh, in a way. So, as you can see, I'm, I have these uh, comics laid out in a landscape fashion. And with Instagram on my mind, right, um, the way... It'll have to be sort of disseminated there is you're bound by, let me try to explain it as clearly as possible. So the first, if you have a sequence of images that you want to flip through on Instagram, so for instance, this strip will be six swipeable images. You are bound by the scale of the first image that you choose. Like this, the scroll will not resize. Right. Um, depending on like your image, so so it'll scale everything. If if I had this panel and then panel two was this size, it would only give me this much of a panel that was this size. So you're bound by that, but there's still plenty of room to play within that format. And for me right now, I have about eighty four thousand followers on Instagram. It's my biggest platform, 
So I'm going to have to format these strips to fit my biggest platform. It would be stupid not to do it this way. Uh, I have about five chapters done so far. And, and at the beginning, page one of every chapter is an introduction piece with a little fresh piece of lettering or whatever. And the characters are answering a question that you do not hear being read off. But they're all answering the question in, in their own voices. So, for instance, this one is about like, your favorite color. Uh, this, one is just, this one is about their parents. And what was kind of slick about it is you can get some sense of like their family life. Like this girl calls her parents by her mom by her first name. I knew those kids. You yes, know? yes, I and, did too. And they and they would probably smoke young and shit like that. Uh, this one would be your favorite comedian. So, you know, they all stay on brand, and it's my effort to like really reinforce who the characters are through repetition. Like every time you you're launched into a new sequence. I formatted these chapters, these episodes, to be about 20 pages at the very least, to like 25 pages, because I had it in mind that maybe I'll, maybe it'll be issues, you know, maybe I'll, right. maybe, you know, like, and in that case, I have five issues worth of these things done, so it's a good idea to have, you know, reinforce the characters with every issue, if every issue is somebody's first issue kind of thing. This was a fun one, and this is a multi-part story, it's about uh, either four or five parts long when it's all said and done and it's going to be the kind of culmination of of book one like book one it will end with the last with the last uh part of a full moon in steel valley but this uh this is just showing off all their trapper keepers that's a really good concept um this one is like who their characters would be in uh dungeons and dragons when they play D and D, this is fun. Yeah, <laughs> throw, throw, throw a little Dutch angle in there. That's the thing too. Like, like uh, you know, this is a Tokusatsu Super Sentai fucking comic. You know, it's in black and white now. But we'll just wait till till I start doing color ones, because uh, the characters they like when when the time comes, they're all going to have their their animal shaped bike helmets, and they got their like their sort of outfits that they've agreed upon and shit, and they and they then they go on adventures. I love the way that looks because this this character her eyes are always covered, um, so like when she she puts on her helmet like she has the biggest eyes. That's a cool drawing. Yeah, it's not far off from like a Hawkman type of thing. Right. It's a '90s comic. Um, you know, I consider them. It's it's uh, Switchblade Shorties, the last of the Latchkey Kids. Is how I how I'm uh, sort of billing it. And the characters, you know, Soto Pop Tanner, Pinky Winslow, Sheena Belvedere. Charlene Kinnison, Foster Lambert. That's like almost exclusively like TGIF sitcom last names and shit with the, with the exception of uh, the Kinnison character. These are blank because I'm just going to kind of copy and paste. I like to imagine Lambert, a, uh, a Jack Lambert reference. Right, right. <laughs> Foster Lambert is from, uh, there was a show called Step by Step. It's the one with uh, Suzanne Summers and Patrick Demp Dempsey, Duffy? I forget. Duffy. Duffy. And uh, they were like a... Uh, Brady Bunch for the 90s. He brought his family. She brought her family. He was the Fosters. They were the Lamberts. Fun like to that. see the screen tone showing up. Yeah, that just came from Japan, you know, and I've been doing the, like, the little figuring out with the, with the back end of the exacto how to, like, chip off the dots in a, in a pleasing way. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to um, print these, these, these finer dots. So I'm going to do one. I don't know what the final format will be. That's something that has to be hashed out. And, uh, if it's if it's printed big enough, like I'll, I'll do more, I'll do more with the dots. But uh, it is a '90s story, so there will be pop culture references throughout, um, including things like the alien autopsy. This is really neat. So here we see like the uh, eight-panel right. grid, right, uh, breaking down. And and I don't know exactly how you're going to format this for Instagram, but as you were saying earlier with the ratio, if the first post on your series you know you define the size right so potentially these could be eight slides it could be, on an instagram yeah to, to between eight and four right because you could do the two yep the two two but just from like flipping through this stack for preparation for this recording it's interesting to see you play with the format of the page yeah we'll show some of those off that was the sensor bar yep mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an all ages video right <laughs> but but this is what jimmy's talking about like you're defined by the size of your first thing man so because i have these more landscape horizontal panels like i have to opt to put two panels up 
at a time uh, for, for the gram. Now on like Facebook, on Twitter, I'll probably just put the single page every day. And uh, the cool thing is when you isolate the images, I did that before I went to Japan. Um, with Webtoon, it'll scroll just right down. Mm -hmm. So that'll be pretty fun. Uh, I encourage everybody to hit the um, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram. I'd like to have 2,000 followers uh, on the on the the gram before I put up episode one, and and we're getting we're getting pretty close to that. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. Ed Piscor's Hip Hop Family Tree, the Omnibus, the beautiful hardcover collection of all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, along with 150 extra pages, is now available wherever books are bought and sold. Red Room, Crypto Killers, The Antisocial Network, and Trigger Warnings, collecting the three seasons of Red Room. These are all self-contained stories, so you can start with any volume of Red Room that crosses your path first. And X-Men Grand Design, the trilogy trade paperback, now in stores, collecting all three sets of X-Men Grand Design in one handy volume. You can read the entire X-Men history in this book. My latest include Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, and Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, collecting all of my Street Angel comics, starring the homeless ninja on a skateboard. True Crime Funnies, my self-published nonfiction anthology featuring a drug cop as well as two wrestling stories. BW Zine, 1986 Zine, celebrating some of the greatest years in comics history. And the Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design mythos. And now, back to our video. There's the characters with their helmets and stuff, playing with a lot of the angles. I'm really like learning a lot about comics. I'm, I'm teaching myself a lot about drawing as I make these strips because I'm trying to be economic and I'm trying to hit those marks of, of, of like doing the one a day. You know, I'm trying my best to do the one a day. And, and uh, the value is really exceptional. Again, flipping through where you get to see a series of these. Right. Um, that's something that I think is stands out compared to some of your previous work is, uh, you know, it feels like you've got a full range of value on each of these pages, and it really works. You know, like, whenever you then go to hard black and white in a panel, that can be an effect. Right, totally. I uh, was going to just do zips the whole time and, and to have, like, a more clean line, but uh, it turned out to be more time in the computer than I was, I was like, willing to, uh, to give. So, man, we might have read Julio's Day this, this week, and I'm like, you know... Gilbert is pretty sharp with those like those like rapidograph backgrounds, yep. man. And, and you could imagine that this could be a zipatone, but having the organic lines, you know, that's uh, Harold Gray or like the, the the classic strip guys from from back in the day. It's still Eddie P. So like, don't think that that I'm trying to like uh, hone in on your young adult market, even though this is a comic I would read as a young adult far more than fucking anything that they're selling as young adult. But it's still the Red Room guy doing his thing. I like to imagine you were like putting together a cover or something for a Red Room collection. And it's like <laughs> leaks into your, right. <laughs> into your daily. Here's, here's another example where, uh, you know, want the girls to be the focal point. But uh, so you just kind of drop out the background. I drew, I drew this page on a kayfabe stream. And as I was like shading the background i was like let me see if i could do that like laser mm -hmm. background that was in all of our school pictures and if i remember right i think you had to pay more for to have your pictures with the, with the laser the macguffin for the comic is that there's a there's a missing kid who's a peer of theirs a, a friend so he's kind of the driving force to kind of set them off on adventures these skies, man. Uh, we I, we were looking at maybe some Robert Crumb something, and kayfabe definitely inflects itself upon upon my drawing. Really good example here of both texture and value. You know, like I was admiring this sky, and there were, there are a couple others along that vein. But the contrast between the flat black and the gray that you're pulling out in your uh, I don't know what the word is because it's not exactly hatching. Right. But it's it's very uh, interesting to see, and it looks cool on screen where you can really kind of see that gradation. This was a page that I ran by you and some, some other fellas because I was kind of unsure about the composition. And and, and uh, I went with unanimous, unanimously, you guys said, stick with a fixed camera because essentially what I did, it started off as fixed camera, but you see how far back he that pushes this character. What I was doing was I was zooming in mm -hmm. so that you saw very clearly 
the transformation that he's slowly turning, you know, morphing back into human. And then this image was like, took up the length pretty much. And it would have made for a more rigorous drawing. You'd see him better and all that kind of stuff. But to show the diminished scale and to keep that fixed camera, I, I do think that it was the way to go. I think it'll look really good scrolling too. Right. Like it's cool to see all four panels here, but whether it's on Instagram or Webtoon, scrolling I think will really sell it, especially with the movement of the moon. Right. And then, you know, the figure being in the same spot, whenever you scroll, that'll really come across. Yeah, yeah. This And this is good stripping in and of itself. You know, it's, it could be like independent of even the comic. So uh, once again, I want to I want to invite everybody to uh, join the Switchblade Shorties uh, Instagram. It's at the link uh, in the description directly below this video. It's going to start coming out on uh, January first of twenty twenty four, and uh, I'm just I'm super excited to uh, to present this material to you. It's really strong cartooning. You got some classmates getting uh, yeah right meeting their end. And of course, those classmates. See, I'm kind of going backwards in the strips. It was real important, uh, and it's you know it's Mobius on his regular comics, but in comic strips, right? Every every cartoonist signs their stuff, and then dates it. But uh, what I noticed rereading a bunch of strips is uh, when you read, like, say, Terry and the Pirates Volume One, or or um, um, Lil Abner or something. They don't know when they're coming out. So so the first batches of strips are always numbered mm. rather than dated. And then usually like, you know, six weeks later or something, like the dates the dates will start to come up. What's all you gotta do is set the schedule. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna hit the marks that I wanted to hit by January first. So I just started dating them with the date that I drew them rather than the date. That makes so much more out. sense to me. Yeah, in, in, in this modern day and age, like, uh, just, you know, do it that way. Yeah, I think so. Um, but definitely number them all. Because, like, that's also a stroke to me of, like, that's that's a, that's lap them on stray bullets. How the comic, uh, in the collections and stuff, the, the number would just, like, continuously be uh, increasing. Oh, that's interesting. Go back one page. Yes, sir. I haven't seen this before. Two different size, you know, you're breaking like your, you, you sort of have quarters are important. Right. But then you can kind of play within those quarters. Right. Um, this is the first time I noticed that the two panels in the quarter are different sizes. Right. Which again, like, I think that kind of vi approach to visual variety is important. Yeah. Uh, not something you see everywhere, but I, I think that's really effective. Yeah. And you don't see it here, like, like all the time. Because like sometimes you get into the rhythm of writing for four and it just kind of feels snappy. But the then, lettering looks really nice too at this scale. But then sometimes it's it's fun to kind of like you know you could cut this one up it, it, to to be a panel in and of itself. Yeah, the lettering it's big, it's bold. What I do is take the the one point uh, Copic marker, and it's not thick enough. So what I do is just fucking jab it, oh, wow. stab it into the paper, and go like this and just mash it about, and then it splays out. And, and gives me that thick. I'm at the age where I probably need reading glasses now. Right. So I lay in bed reading reading stuff, and it'll be like holding it far. The old man trick of like arm's length. Right. Yeah. So I appreciate this this size lettering. Love this kind of lettering too. Like having some variety within that lettering. Uh, I again, the variety thing keeps it visually interesting. Right. And if you look at this page, you have bold. You have like a standard lettering this is very expressive and different and then this is a different size yet again so a lot of variety on one page within lettering which you know people don't even think about lettering half the time right so there it is man i just want to put the blast out to everybody that i've been working super super hard on doing this daily comic strip and i cannot wait to present it to you guys um ultimately it'll it'll find its way in print and and I, like I don't know what will happen with the uh, the daily strip, like when that when that happens, we're sort of working on deals and things. But uh, you're definitely going to be able to read this thing online, and I hope you guys keep up with it. Um, I think uh, having a dedicated Instagram where all kind of just lives will be a good way, a good sort of home base to kind of check in on it. I like this library page a lot. Ugh. Some cool drawing on there. That's definitely one of those pages that, you know, we talk about before where it's like, man, I just know Jaime would do it in a much more elegant way and not have to put so many fucking lines on it. That may be true, but there's a lot of great stuff here. I like these trees in the foreground whenever they're going in and like, that's fantastic. This foreground is, character, you this, know, good angle. This is the Homestead Library, by yeah. the way. I made sure to uh, That's good. represent my joint. So... There's a bunch of stuff. Wow. 
Wow. 100, 110 pages right here. Oh, yeah, the third chapter. Like, be, be on the lookout. Like, that should start coming out around March, where it's all in first-person point of view. And there's mm. a, there's an ethereal, like, narrator character who's a, who's a, a, a classmate of those. First first day of school, you know, like a new kid in, in class and spends time with each of the characters. But the camera never ex- talks. You don't know if it's a boy or girl. Uh, That's a great idea. It, it, it was a fun experiment. This this one, like I hope it comes across, where they're hanging out on Pinky's bed, watching wrestling. You see Hulk up there, and then Pinky like lunges, dips behind uh, the camera. You see the hands coming forward, and then you see like the cl- it's like the yeah. clinch of it's good stuff of the uh, sleeper hold. And then you see him kind of like <laughs> waffling back, and then you see the camera's hands kind of shaking, looking up at the uh, ceiling with the eyeballs kind of closing. Amazing. This, this, is, this is like Stu Hart. Right. Uh, yeah, let, yeah, let, yeah. let me show you a move. Right, right down in the dungeon, man. <laughs> so there you have it. Switchblade shorties. Daily comic strip. Hopefully. You know, like I, like I at least got you guys covered at least until April. This is one of my favorite things, too, in comics. Panels in panels. Right. That dot matrix yep. printer paper, dude. Because that's the era. I never explicitly call it out. And, and, you know, that's like a money shot right there. Yep. I like this, too, with the um, different size white space around there. Yeah. Haven't seen much of that in this stack going through. And uh, any th- time these kinds of, uh, I don't know, experiments show up, it's pretty neat. You know, it kind of pops. It's, it's that little bit of thoughtfulness. How about we leave it at this one, man? They're, they're, they're having a little slumber party. And, uh, you know, want to watch some Barney tapes before bed. And then, of course, the feistiest of the kids sneaks this off of uh, her big brother. Faces of Death uh, 1 and Faces of Death 3. Man, I remember watching Faces of Death whenever I I was probably too young to watch it. And it disturbed me so badly. (laughs) (laughs) I thought about that thing for, like, weeks. Yeah, I think we looked at the page that comes comes right after that. uh, You know, not, not too far from there. But there it is, man. Switchblade Shorties coming to you January 1st, 2024, on a daily basis. Uh, you could read ahead on my Patreon right now, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks get you the archive there, and uh, all the Red Room is up there as well. There you have it, man. Good to go, Jimmy? Yes. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you. When new videos are available, we are a daily YouTube channel with more than uh, 1,600 videos in our filmography. As we speak, might have talked about your favorite comics. Hit the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Uh, Hit the magnifying glass. Type in your favorite titles. uh, Check out those videos. But if we did not talk about your favorite comics, if you can't find those videos in our uh, videography, you got to let us know in the comments what those uh, comics are so that we can push those a little bit higher on our to-read pile. We have a Patreon out there, and the King Kayfabers on the Patreon mitigate the Kayfabe effect by getting all the videos before anybody else. But there are several levels of support on the Patreon. Ultimately, the, vi- the uh, videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Uh, before you is a healthy sample of what those books are. But let's bring some uh, illumination into matters. Jimmy, what do you have? Hulk Grand Design is... Still available in the wild, but sold out at the uh, publisher level. So pick up Hulk Grand Design if you haven't already. This is my contribution to the Grand Design mythos and one of the nicest books that I have made. Uh, I do the design behind this book. And as you can see from this fluorescent green cover, if your store has it, you can probably see it from outside in the parking lot. I've also been self-publishing my latest zines, 1986 zine, BW zine, and True Crime Funnies, my nonfiction anthology comic book, are all available on patreon.com slash jimrug or at jimrug.com. And my latest books, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, and Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics, collect all of my Street Angel comics that I have made so far. These are about a homeless ninja on a skateboard battling all the things you would expect a superhero to battle. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy is coming to you. It it's actually came out in November, so you can get your hands on that. It's all of my X-Men Grand Design works in one handy-dandy trade paperback collection. Red Room has been the focus for some time. There are three trade paperbacks that are going to be out there, man. Two right now 
uh, antisocial network and trigger warnings are available in stores, but this third one, Crypto Killers, is uh, the one that will be coming out in January. So get that put on your pull list, scoop it up when it comes out, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. You can start there because each of these books is completely self-contained with four complete stories. So pick your poison, you dig it, grab another one. Ultimately, uh, the best book I've made to date is the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, collecting all of my Hip Hop Family Tree uh, comics from Fantagraphics. Plus, I have 150 pages of additional content and material in there. Uh, it's the best book I made. It's the most comprehensive. I uh, worked really, really hard on it. Thank you guys who were supporting it uh, to the level that you did. Uh, but we do still have some of those available. So scoop that up, check it out as soon as possible. There are some other ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel directly, however. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it, the many ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give them those marching gorgeous, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.